Hey everybody, it's Natsy Jones here. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I really appreciate you being here. It's about to storm here in Florida. I'm in Central Florida and we have a storm that's on the way and it should be hitting in about 20 minutes. So I wanna make this video before we have any issues with electricity. Um, I didn't get to make one on Monday because I had my kids home from Christmas break still. I thought they were going to go back to school on Monday, but they went back on Tuesday. So here I am. Today, guys, I want to share with you, um, I was doing my Jesus Calling devotional. We at the top of the year. I just turned 41, January 7th. Super excited about being 41. Let me tell you, it's better than the alternative, which is death. So I'm glad every time I get another year to live. Um, but what was shared with me was that I needed to slow down. Do you ever find yourself just going and going and going and going and going? I know a lot of people like this. It's almost like it's addictive, like you can't stop. I just shared a word with a friend of mine, um, a young lady, and I told her that she was valuable even if she did not do the things that she does, if she did not produce if she did not work constantly because she's such a workaholic. And I know what that feels like because I've been the same way. And I realized I thought that's where my value was. I just had to hit the ground running. As soon as it was the new year, I had a million things I knew I was going to do. And I was ready to run after it. But God interrupted my pursuit. It was just like, pause. Be still and know that I'm God. And um, I had to look at... The fact that I, when I go at that speed, when we're going and we're going and we're going, it's very hard to run like that and still hold on to God's hand. A lot of times he wants us to slow down so that we can experience life with him, so that we can hold his hands and, uh, and walk and take his pace instead of our own pace. My pace is super duper fast. When I wake up, I'm like a jackrabbit until... I fall into the bed to go to sleep. I'm like going, going all day long. Um, and I've been like that for a while and it's almost like a habit and it's addictive because when I sit still, I feel like something's wrong. But God is showing me and he's showing you his pace is what's best. Now we talk about his will all the time. You know, we want to do God's will. Okay, what that means for someone who moves fast like me is like, I'm going to do God's will and I'm going to do it real fast. But you know what's also in his will? His timing is a part of his will. His pace is a part of his will. If it's his will for you to get somewhere in two months, but you want to get there in two weeks, so you run and you stand in front of that door after two weeks, you're going to have to stand there for another six weeks because it's not opening until two months when he said it was going to open. You cannot rush God. It's best to just hold his hand and accept his pace because the truth is, it's him that's making everything good happen in your life anyway, not you. I know we feel good about the decisions we make. We feel good when we feel like we've accomplished something. But at the end of the day, if you're his child and your hand is in his hand and your life is in his hands, then everything good that happens in your life and even the bad that turns out good is happening because of him. So when you submit yourself to his pace, what you're really saying is, I know I can't rush this because it's really not me that's making this happen. So then I asked God, I said, okay, well, how am I supposed to look at this? Because I know I'm supposed to do something. I don't want to go too fast, but then I don't want to get complacent. Like, help me. And you know what he said? Hold my hand and take it step by step with me. But just remember, as you're moving with me, remember, it's really me that's making it happen, not you. So... I got it. It hit my mind, the perfect analogy. I remember when I was a little girl, and I don't know how many of you have experienced this with parents or grandparents, where you wanted to drive. You could be like six or seven years old, five or six years old, and you sit in, I used to sit in my dad's lap. He would, I would say, Dad, I want to drive. He would let me sit in his lap. His foot was pressing the pedal, but my hands were on the steering wheel. And I was steering the car, and I felt like I was driving. I really felt like I was driving. But what I didn't know is the whole time, the reason that we did not get in the accident is because, this was back in the day, when people used to do crazy stuff. Kids used to be on the back of pickup trucks. It was real. 
it was a lot more chill back in the 90s. My father was holding the bottom of the steering wheel the whole time. I just didn't realize it was really him that was steering the whole time. I just had my hands on the wheel. And the wheel was moving. Now that I think about it, the wheel was moving whether I moved it or not. Because my father was steering the wheel. Not only was he steering the wheel, but he was the only one that could reach the gas pedal. He was the only one that could reach the brake. He was still in control. I just felt like I was in control. I felt like I was driving. And it made me feel good. And it made him feel good because he liked to see me happy because I felt like I was driving. But he knew, even if I didn't know, that... He, he was still in full control of what was happening in that car. That's what it's like. You know, people say, Jesus, take the wheel. He already has the wheel. You just need to realize that Jesus has the wheel. There's nothing that you can make happen on your own. We don't have any control over anything. We barely have control of ourselves sometimes. You know how many times I've made a New Year's resolution and I didn't have the willpower to carry it out? So listen, we have a lifetime to try to figure out how to control ourselves. You think we can control anybody else? You think we can control the weather? You think we can control what happens in the world? No. God is in control. We are his children, so we benefit from what it is that he does and has done. So anything that happens in your life, any success, anything that seems like it's a tragedy, understand that God is in control and so you don't have to rush. You don't have to, to work yourself to death trying to make something happen. You don't have to do that. That's not the plan that you're on. Some of us don't know what it's like to have a loving father, a loving mother, loving parents, guardians that take care of us. So when it comes to the spirit realm, it's hard for us to comprehend the love of God and how much he takes care of us. But it's him that opens the doors of opportunity. It's him that closes the doors to keep us from harm. Once you really accept that, your stress levels will go from here to here. It'll be easy to accept a slower pace because you understand one step with God is like 10,000 on your own. You don't have to run yourself ragged trying to make something happen. Tell your father what you want and you step when he steps. When I move, you move just like that. You understand that from Prophet Ludacris? Oh, Lord, that made somebody mad. Y'all get what I'm trying to say. It's just a joke. But honestly, submitting to him, submitting to his will means submitting to his way. Submitting to his way means submitting to his timing and his pace. What he has is better for you than what you have for yourself. His pace is better than your pace. His place is better than your place. Everything that God has is better than anything that you could do for yourself. So just give it all to him. God, I give you my efforts. I give you my energy. I give you my pace. I give you my ideas. All of these things that I put on a pedestal, these things were really what I believed was making things work for me. But it wasn't that. It was you the whole time. Your hand was on the bottom of that steering wheel. You were keeping me from crashing. You were moving me where I needed to go. I remember when they interviewed Oprah Winfrey and she talked about remembering feeling like she was being carried at one point in her career. She, I just felt like I was being carried. That everywhere I went, a door was opening. Another one and then another one and then another one. She also talked about having a moment of surrender unto God before she did the movie Color Purple and how God opened that door. It behooves us to get in the position to receive from God because God is ultimately giving. He gives a lot more than he takes. So whatever he requires of us, he's going to give us way more. I want to be in the best position possible to receive from my Heavenly Father because He knows what my heart desires. He knows what my heart desires and He's given my heart the things to desire so that He could give them to me. He knows what I want. He knows what I need. 
And there's nothing that he can't give me. There's nothing that he doesn't have. He is the source and the resource. So why make it hard for yourself? Why work your fingers to the bone when you have a father who wants to keep you? I hear thunder, so I'm going to stop. I hope that you have been inspired by this message. I hope it draws you closer to God. I hope you understand how much he loves you and how much he wants to take care of you as you submit to his will. See you next time. Bye.